Coming to you from Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge in Ingalls, Indiana. Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. It's Final Third Friday. Welcome back to Final Third Friday. I'm Isaiah. And I'm Rob. And today we have a couple of guests you probably know if you've been here before. <laughs> We've got Will and Chris. Hey, guys. Hi. Will's a returner to the show. He is. My like second podcast. brand spanking new. Yeah. Podcast and you, virgin. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, uh, Chris is one of the guys that was on the pick with us when we did the backbone pick. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, he's not new by any means, just new to the show. Yeah. So uh, today we are smoking the Le Creme by Crown Heads. This is in the Robusto size. The wrapper is Connecticut Broadleaf, and it's... It's got an Ecuadorian Sumatra binder, and the filler's all from Nicaragua. It's around a medium body. Um, I think it smokes a little heavier than that as far as flavors go, but yeah. definitely body is a true medium on it. Yeah, and today we are going to be pairing that with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This is the A123 batch. Just came out in January of this year, and it's been getting a lot of great reviews, so we thought we'd give it a shot. Yeah. For science. So for science. For science. Not for so the let's kids, get these things poured up. And <laughs> not for the kids. No. I don't think the kids for need the children. Three. I actually tried it for the first time last night. It's pretty tasty. 23, and it is really good. Yeah, I did actually. Now, on a, on a fresh palate, you're like, ooh, it's a little toasty. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. All right. Well, Oop. no, you're good. Oh. Right here. Thank you. You're welcome. Since I left mine at Chris's house. <laughs> That's right. You, that looks very similar to yours, so it's all good, yeah, right? Well, oh, thank you. Yeah, so getting into the cut on this thing. Looks like everybody's going with the V. Maybe. Yep. <laughs> Everybody went with the V cut. What are we getting on the cold draw? Back to Cocoa Puffs. Kind of is, but there is a, a little hay. Hay and Cocoa Puffs for me. I got a little raisin. I was thinking raisin as well. Yeah. 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 Mine's more of a, I'm getting more of the chocolatey sweetness yeah, than the um, yeah. raisiny. Yeah. Hmm. You uh, just like to be different, don't you? I do. I, I like to be like Chris. <laughs> I'm with him. <laughs> it's 50-50. It. I'm picking it up. 50-50. And you know Split what? Field. Will and I have decided you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with chocolate raisinettes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Raisinette. Actually, that's probably closer than anything we've said so far. So be. shut up, Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get these. Well, let's, let's get in the whiskey first. All right. Up. The whiskey. Mm. Just kind of, I mean, it's, this, is a this is a nice because I mean, we're literally noon on a Saturday, starting with 125.6 <laughs> yeah. proof. So it's got a little heat in the nostrils just to start off with, but uh, I'm getting a, kind of a fruity. I mean, it's kind of fruity, kind of. To me, it almost reminds formal. me of cornbread, man. Cornbread. Cornbread. Not getting much of that yet. And there's a, a strong vanilla quality in there, but it is more gotcha. along the lines of like a floral vanilla. I get it. Vanilla. Sweet. Well, and you and I were talking a little bit about that the um, yesterday or day before, whatever it was, and I'm not sure which one I like better between this and the C922. They're both really good. They both are. And I would say the <clears throat> previous ones last year were not as good as the C922. Yeah. This one is holding up nice. I mean, it's got a good viscosity in the mouth. I mean, it's very totally. thick and... Um, Almost, almost honey thick, but it's more vanilla flavor. Yeah, yeah, I get, Which, I get a vanilla flavor. Uh, vanilla. Nose too. I get a, a lot of coating on the roof Ooh, of my mouth. It's yeah. more vanilla extract too, as it sits in the mouth. I'm getting yeah. more of the extract than actual sweet vanilla. All right, I'm lighting up. Yeah, it's time for a stick. <coughs> I'm working. Oh, did you say that this cut and light brought to you by Calibri? Cutters and lighters? Is it brought to? Is not yet, but we're working it. So. Well, there's no reason for us to say it. That's until true. They pay for That's it. true. Because they phony up, huh? Yeah. So one of the things we're going to be talking about today, um, these two guys went over to. And there, there's a business over in St. Louis called ABV Bottle Shop. We'll have them explain more about that. I know we've talked about it a little bit, but you guys just went over for a century. Well, we got to get 
and we're definitely going to be enjoying talking about that. We got to get on into the off the light notes first, though. We'll go. Right off the light, there's a almost a savory quality to this cigar. It's almost an umami kind of mushroomy on the palate. There's a little bit of chocolate there, a little bit of cinnamon, or maybe it's cedar. <coughs> And uh, the retro hail is not crazy strong, but there's definitely some black pepper there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting that that earthy kind of earthiness to it, but it still has the black pepper tingle on the tongue more than the nose. Yeah. I'm, but I'm also still getting. I mean, literally get a cocoa puff and light her on fire. Yeah. I'm kind of getting that too, which get is less nice. Less of that now, but very earthy. Yeah. Earthy chocolate. Yeah, yeah earthy. I'm not getting a yeah. lot of the, the raisin sweetness anymore. Raisin no, that's gone. Yeah. And I think this is going to pair nicely with this whiskey because we um, we had this yesterday with another with a dark cigar, and it really pulled out more of the sweet fruit notes out of the whiskey. Yeah, going to the whiskey, it's almost like a salted caramel. Like there's kind of that, it pulls out an almost briny quality in it. It does. Wow, makes the sides of your cheeks just kind of Sa flare well, out. I'm just salivating oh, yeah. like crazy after it. But you ever get that kind of a, I don't know what you want to call it, like tingling, where it kind of hits your jaw? That's what I'm getting right here on the outside of the jaws right now. Me too. That's that's nice. And I don't, and I don't know if you can tell on the video. I'm sure you probably can. This These things are smokestacks, man. Oh, yeah. Right off the light, <laughs> these things are blowing smoke like crazy. Beautiful box press on them, too. Mm-hmm. Cap holds up well. We all did the Calibri V on it. I so. will say the only thing I don't like about their packaging is the cigars were in there pretty tight. So the first cigar you pull out ends up looking like mine. Flat. Kind of twisted and flat. Yeah. yeah. Still burning perfectly. It's no problem at Still all. Still smokes. But it's not as pretty as your guys. See, I take care of you guys. <laughs> Think we were do. so worried about it. <laughs> I should have gave Isaiah the one that looked like a butthole or something, but that's okay. <laughs> a cigar that looks like a butthole. All yep. the all the folds. I'm getting a lot more caramel now. Yeah, yeah me on too. Than vanilla. What I do remember because we uh, both Will and I smoked a, a different size of this yeah. last weekend, and it just kind of uh, initially. I mean, it just smoothed out as it as it okay. as it smoked. Like was I it was the like same almost, one. Or was it the Bellicoso that was the... Um, the Bellicoso. I think it was but the limited edition. The limited edition Bellicoso, because yeah. they do have Bellicoso regular release, too. Oh, okay. I believe. This was limited edition. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. I didn't look at the article oh, yeah. close enough. Yeah. I'm not a detail guy. But it got, like, creamier, and it, it really mellowed out. Because initially, when I lit it up, I'm like, yeah, should have gone with Maduro or something, you know, stick it, stay with my, you know... Old, you know, some old, but you know, same thing, but it really all the way up your, yeah, yeah, I, like your alley, yeah, 10, 15 minutes in, I was like, this is great. It just, it just got, yeah, probably just got the, really creamy and smooth. And the I was biggest like, difference for this compared to some of the other things you smoke are most you usually smoke things are a little bit stronger, more towards that exactly medium to full or what, full. Uh, what do you call an individual who is the head cigar individual at it? Like, do you have could a title? Could be a tobacconist. Or, could tobacconist. Yeah. Uh, tobacconist. Smallier, whatever you want to call yeah, him. I mean, he, he tried to steer me clear of it because initially I'm like, you know, what do you got in a Maduro come out? You know, it was the big venue, right? Yeah. A lot of stuff. No prices. No prices. Uh, no prices. So I'm like, okay. I'm, yeah. <laughs> no prices. We're going to get the outsider discount on that, right? So, yeah. But it, it was all reasonable. It was a great, you know, it was a really comfortable place to be. But Yeah. And, and. We're talking about Stanley's over in St. Louis. Yeah. We don't have a problem calling out other shops because well, we're all in this for the same reason. Tell me if I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. No, it. you're not. <laughs> but no, they, um, Stanley's is downtown. They're kind of one of the staple cigar lounges in the, the St. Louis area. Yeah. And um, from the pictures I saw, and I've not got a chance to be there yet, but from the pictures I saw from you guys and some friends of mine have been there, the place looks beautiful. Yeah. It looks like a really nice spot. So ornate, a little loud. Yes. Um, but it was fun to be there. When, yeah. People were nice. Good. When we got there, we went to go walk in the humidor, and it's locked. There's a keypad lock on it. We're like, great. We can't even walk in the thing. So he brought us the menu out, and then the menu didn't have pricing, and we're like, oh. So we can't go in to look at them. We don't know how much they cost. This is not going to go well. Yeah. We were already getting turned off. But the, he really the younger, he was a younger guy, super, super nice guy. Came over, brought out five or six, went over all the pricing with us. 
so we could select yeah. know, what we wanted at the price we wanted. So that was all fine. Um, just very knowledgeable, um, super friendly, easy to work with. So, good. Yeah, we had good. a good time. It was fun. Right. Kind of what you just want out of that. Better yeah. and better. It did the cigar got better and better. This one did? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. It's been a minute since I've had one of these. I don't know why I don't go back to them very often. I think I we smoked a lot more of those Bellicosos yeah. when they yeah, were first we out than we've gotten to the original. Because what's the size on this one again? This is a Robusto. Just a regular Robusto. Okay. Box press. Okay. Uh, it says 5 by 50 so, okay. on the box. You're a Crown Heads fan, boy. What does the box say? Lim oh, it is lo it's not limited edition, Karim. It's Locker Rim, right? Yeah. Locker. Okay. Okay. Yep. I saw the LE and was thinking limited edition. I'm like, these aren't limited edition. Yep. Oh yeah. So this cigar has been in their uh, been in their arsenal for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when it came out. Uh, the other thing that I was reminded of recently was the La Patisserie was has been around for a while. Yeah. For a while it was a Tennessee only, really? and it it just came with a uh, a brown velvet band around the foot, and so like you. As soon as you took it out of the box, you had no clue what it was. Yeah. And I had smoked those, but they're not as good as the the patisserie that we that we have now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I ever had the original. Okay. Um, and that's one thing. When I'm down there next week, I'll see if I can find can something. Anymore? Yeah. That's what's kind of odd, you know. I, what's the other one that they have? The uh, the one that has a little blue band at the foot. Azuli Oro. I'm like, again, these are great cigars, and the the presentation on them just kind of falls flat a little bit. And I don't know if they do that because they're like testing the water to see how good that cigar is going to be before they bring it into the lineup. But it's like, yeah, sometimes. The hard part is, is you can't even tell somebody. Spumado C Major, same thing. I mean, and that was a PCA only release. I know, but I, still. Dress that bad boy up. That, that little ribbon around the foot had to cost just as much as what a piece of paper around a cigar the rings. Would be. Cigar Shout rings. Out. There you go. You need to give them a call and see if they'll sponsor you. Yeah. Just walking around. Just you walking around town. Cigar rings. You. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they make plenty of money because they make bands for like everybody. Yes, they do. But so, they make the best ones. So okay. Cigar. We're down. We're we're just getting into the first third. Are you seeing the transitions yet? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's already starting. Black pepper's kinda, already kind of mellowed yep, out on me. Yeah. No, way more. A lot more. Almost. Almost like a uh, charred steak kind of savoriness yeah. to it now. Uh, it still has some of that chocolate quality, but it's not it sweet. Does. I'm getting more into the, like the savories now. Yeah. The whiskey's smoother. just smoothing out and sweet and getting sweeter and sweeter. Mm -hmm. And you never know at 125 proof. Yeah. As sweet as this is right now. Yeah, that's, that's definitely one of the best Elijah Craig barrel proofs I've tasted. It's and you've pushing. had the C922. As yeah, well. I got several different ones at home. Okay. This, yeah. Because yeah. I think I'm, this I'm is my back favorite. And forth between two of them. I, I, I sit here with a, a pour of each of them and back and forth. I'm like, I like these both a lot. I can't say that about all of these. Oh. Tam's drinking early. <laughs> I would say if I was drinking this blind and didn't know, I would probably guess it had been finished in something. Because I, I get a so lot of sweetness. I yeah, agree. there it is. Yeah. So I'd be wrong, but yeah. I, it's good. It's very sweet. Yeah. Well, we had that last week. We did a blind, and we, we swore it was a finished. Oh, my gosh. And, I mean, it was just almost like a sherry port sweetness to it. And nope, it was just straight up bourbon. It's I don't even know what it was either, but. Probably something you brought us, but no, it was the stick and stave blind. We oh, did. the stick and stave. That's right. Mm. That's and, right. Uh, that one ended up being. Yeah, I, don't, I think that ended up being ancient age. That's right. That was yeah. the first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I cool. uh, refilled those and sent them out this week. Did you? Yeah. Somebody's gonna get some heat as far as pours go. Mm. Um, did you finish off with a nice peated scotch at the end, like the no, guys did? No, no, no. I, <laughs> that's a that's a gamble, you know. It that's is. a gamble. So I gave him. Well, okay. So do you know who you know who you're sending it to? Yes. So the guy that sent it to you probably knew you like peated scotch. Well, yeah. I mean, I did so. the I did the same thing he probably did for me was look at my posts on the page and say, okay, here's things that would be in this guy's wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. 
but there might have been a backbone in there that was finished in port sherry and amaro barrels <laughs> i think there was uh, a remus repeal reserve in there a couple other things that's cool. i don't remember what they were oh the atsnd rye oh and that's kind of cool too because yeah. you're giving him things he's never going to be able to try oh yeah yeah so i don't know that's cool. I uh, I definitely upped the proof from what was given to me. <laughs> I don't think I put a thing in there under a hundred. Well, God bless you, son. <laughs> yeah. So Rob's trying to convince me for Father's Day to get him tickets to the Abs game. Actually, in it's not me convincing you. You were trying to convince Lisa last <laughs> night. You were all willing. I was gonna get him a T-shirt to wear the, to the game. That says, "I'm a good boy." <laughs> Who's, a good boy? <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Yeah, uh, but yeah she won't let us go because it's the weekend. And <laughs> well, she won't let us and go because she's a party pooper or something. Like party that. pooper. When was it? When's the game? Fourteenth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a weekend. We have we have a, a music coming on Saturday oh. and stuff, and it just it would be a pain for those three to try to run the place by yeah. themselves that but. day. You have a lot of events coming up. You're going to be busy. We're trying. We're, we got quite a few coming, yeah. But we got Holly coming March 1st for Crown Cigars. Yeah. Um, she's confirmed she's going to be here. Um, and we, we're going to have all three of her cigars. And honestly, I didn't get a ton of supply because we got a lot of stock right now. Um, but if people want to buy boxes and I'm, I run out, I'm going to honor the discount for the event and people can buy a box and still get the 20% discount. Yeah. And then I'll order things from Holly and bring them I in. I mean, so. the Knight and the Queen from Crown Cigars, fantastic. And we're going to have her on the podcast because yeah. she's going to stick around she's that evening for later and she's cool. going to She's going to record with us. Yeah, so. that'd be great. That would be fun to have her on. And yeah, absolutely. Because I know a lot of people follow her on Instagram. Um so this will be a chance to see have people see her behind the and brand. And a lot of people are just like, oh, yeah, she's just a girl. Like, she's, that's what she's got going for it. She's freaking smart. And she's got and a She's a business a woman. Like, yep. she knows cigars. She knows whiskeys. So she it'll really be good does. having her on the show. And that's something. I'm going to reach out to her and find out some of her favorite whiskeys. And we'll pair one of her one of her favorite pairings with one of her cigars. We'll Hopefully it it's out. not Angel's Envy. I don't think so. I've seen some of the stuff she <laughs> Angels she Rye. Posts. Angels Rye. She posts that some is, good stuff. That is a bottle that is, if I were to own it, it would be a drain pour to me. I wow. just, oh. I don't think it's that bad. You can mix it with something. But <laughs> it's not one I'm reaching for, for sure. I would not. Now, Angels Envy Rye. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to pour that well, on my Jeep to clean the tires. About. Angels oh, I'm looking for my regular Angel's Envy. We're talking about the rye. Oh, my bad. My, yeah, the rye. Yes. I will say, when Becky and I went to Angel's Envy and did a tasting, yeah. they had us pair the rye with a chocolate um, orange truffle. Ooh. And it worked. Did it? It was good. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I found a way I can drink this. Because yeah, <laughs> well, otherwise, Angel's Envy rye, to me, is like so... It's so finished. And it's it sickening me. sweet. Yeah. It's, it's like, sweet. It's butterscotch. It just reminds yeah. me of drinking butterscotch pancakes if that was a See, thing. but I love butterscotch and I don't like that. Yeah. Hmm. That's the thing though. We we've been talking to a lot of people right here and a lot of people love it. And it's not there's no no in between. You either love it or you hate it. There's yeah. no in between there. It's not one that people are like, oh, it's just okay. Yeah. I have it's issues with it because it says rye on the label and it tastes nothing. Like, at rye spice would do it a lot of good to balance it out. Actually, it probably would. It's not yeah. present. Yeah. 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 So, let's yeah. get into some stuff here. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about your trip over to ABV. I mean, I know it's not definitely not your first time. You've been there several times. Was My it your first, first time, time? Yeah, first time being so there. So, let's hear some good, you know, hear your first thoughts when you got in there. Oh, I mean, uh, you know... You, Walked in, really interesting, you know, barrel picks. Um, other than the why they had proper 12 in there never made any sense to me. <laughs> they I mean, had just, proper 12? I, well, at least behind the bar. I didn't know if they, if they had it out. They had it out. They were they selling. It so I was like, all this fantastic, unique stuff. Because, I, I, I mean, that's, I really like that. You know, that like the, the wood hat that y'all went and found. You never heard of it before. You know, love the uniqueness there. So, that, you know. Full of stuff like that, and was really intrigued by you know the things that we, the few things that we tasted. We didn't hang around too long for reasons yeah. we'll may get into later, but um. might as well. <laughs> it's not like anyone's gonna oh listen. My, yeah, that, one kinda, that one kind of stood out. 
uh, you know, odd to me that it was even in the shop. Yeah. Right. But um, everything that was tasted was was really good. That I said it wrong the other day. That puncher's chance. Yeah. A um, couple of the wood hats. They have uh, several um, single barrel picks from Deerhammer in okay. Colorado. I, oh, I did not get I a chance to try them, but no. I wanted to. But um, the puncher's chance was interesting. It was just shy of 120 proof okay. and was the word on the street was it was supposed to be seven year aged wild turkey now I had the wild turkey connoisseur Eric Jansen try it and he is not convinced that it's wild turkey he thinks it's heaven hill so yeah. um, either way it's good and you tried the fudge with chance right yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah, you had, you tried it, right? I did, yeah. yeah. I, was that, that wasn't the one you brought in, too. That was the one I brought in Sunday that you tried. Okay, yeah. okay. It, it was, was a lot of cinnamon. It was very um, cinnamon. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Um, I was thinking for some reason that was one. No, that was the 17 year yeah, you tried last the time. The backbone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, okay. This is a straight very Kentucky good. bourbon. They just don't say where it's sourced from. So, um, but it's, it's good. Um, but yeah, Steve Akeley and Jim fans, fans Nat own the ABV wow. bottle shop um, and they've been open for just under a year now. I think March will be their one year oh, wow. anniversary too. Um, I didn't realize they were that young. So they they had a pretty decent selection but they only do single barrel um, store picks. Other than proper 12. Other than proper 12. Their picks. It's all their picks. It's not like they're not getting just store. Out. It's just their yeah. store yeah. pick. Yeah. I can't imagine the amount of time they spend on barrel picks, but they are They're heavily worse invested to do with your in time. it. Um, well, and, and they have a good palate. They do, and I would say something else that you know anybody that's listening to this that that comes in here and talks to us. I mean, I'm just curious if something like that would go over well here. If that would go over, I mean, because I, mean, I mean, it'd be fun to see what people's thoughts are. Because I mean, you said before they they do the barrel picks. Obviously, they're doing hundreds of those a year. But it's not just that. They're doing trainings and classes and bringing distillers in to, to have meetups. I mean, they're doing a lot of stuff like that. So I'm just curious, you know, what you guys think of it. would be something you'd support around here. I mean, speaking of classes, there was yeah. a certain lady. <laughs> there was. So, yeah, the re let's talk about the reason we went. Yeah, the, reason, yeah. the real reason we went was um, Steve has put on um, – uh, a class he's he's brought in Jackie Zycan. Jackie Zycan, formerly with Brown Foreman and Old Forester. Shout out to Jackie. Shout, Shout out to Jackie. Cheers. Cheers. He's not gonna listen to Cheers. this. Sorry, it gives me a chance to drink. <clears throat> and Jackie left Brown Foreman uh, towards the latter part of last year mm -hmm. and started a new line of whiskey called Hidden Barn that she's partnered with, and I've. Apologize. There's a gentleman from Colorado um, who's a partner, and then Royce Neely with yeah. the Neely family um, distillery out of Sparta, Kentucky. Okay. And the first couple of batches they released of Hidden Barn were um, Neely juice, um, and they this recent one uh, she partnered with another. They well, sourced barrels. I don't from remember what it was. Somewhere yeah. else. Um, but Jackie does sensory training classes, and so what that means is. She kind of walks you through how to nose bourbon, how to taste bourbon, and how to pick out certain aromas, certain scents that make up a bourbon profile, yeah. how to isolate them. And it's a skill, and you can learn quickly what you can and can't taste. Everyone we found out has a blind spot. Yeah. So there's some things that I'm going to be able to taste that you're not. Right. There's some things you're going to be able to taste that Chris can't. And it was interesting to kind of go through that. Um, but they had, uh, the way it was set up, there were, uh, there was an envelope with nine packages inside and each, in each one there was a, a flavor or an aroma that you would nose. They were potent. Yeah, and so we had four whiskeys out in uh, Glencairns and there was a candle and the scented candle had all of those flavor profiles out of all nine of those packages built in. So the idea was was to, to nose it and not shout out what you think it is because as you well know, as soon as you shout out something, people search for that and they find it. Yeah. Yeah. Which nobody 
follow that rule. <laughs> Especially the. Never mind. I'm not going to go. Nah, trash him. <laughs> Like, wow, there were just some like, boy, loud the, folks behind there was a, us. There was a nice lady behind us that couldn't contain. <laughs> Very much into essential oils, and she wanted everybody to know about it. And oh, yes. she trained I'm tasting on bergamot. The What's that? <laughs> I'm, I'm tasting bergamot. Or bergamot, tastes, however you pronounce that. <laughs> tastes like cedar wood. That's probably our saffron. 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 Will's blind spot is saffron, by the way. Really? <laughs> That's interesting. So in saffron, you can pull out multiple... It's complex. You can you can break saffron down. And you can find tobacco in saffron. You can find honey in saffron. Oh, you can find a lot of different. I couldn't find shit notes. in saffron. <laughs> <laughs> Not working for me. Um, That's fine. And it was. I, I did get kind of fatigued. Uh, oh, you will. Nosing fatigue, if you will. And so her trick was just smell your hand. Yeah. You smell your own scent, and that kind of resets your brain and gets all the other scents out of there. Don't go scent coffee because it's got all different. You can notes. find coffee yeah. and bourbon. I mean, yeah. you can find coffee in the whiskey. There were three so. things I learned, and that was one of. Them. Yeah. That, um, yeah. So you only that. learned three things. Three things. That was all I got. And one of them was that I mean, Jackie didn't want to date you. <laughs> She, we don't know that for a fact. Right. Yeah, I never got to talk to her. She um, <laughs> she made a uh, yeah. an interesting. Um, That's mine. Oh, is it yours? Okay, sorry. An interesting tip she gave was like when you're nosing a bourbon, especially a complex complex bourbon with a lot of nose, you know, a lot of nose pro or nasal. What, what am I looking for? Like a lot of different scents. Yeah, it, yeah. Right? yeah. Focus on one category. Like, out. Okay, I learned four Focus things. on a savory aromatic or a sweet aromatic or a floral note and just say, okay, I'm just looking for floral here. What can yeah. I find? I'm just looking for fruit here. What can I find? Yeah. That, that actually that made of, a lot of sense, it, right? It helps, it helps you, you like focus down to like a category. It helps of, you deconstruct. Of, yeah, yeah, versus like I'm just overwhelmed by what I'm, which is what happens to me. I'm overwhelmed by everything that I'm smelling and I can't put my finger on any of it. And that's mainly in the nose. You're talking about the olfactory, no, no, no. not just. Oh, you can do it all the way around. But I'm saying that's where and you started was, yes. was the nose. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But to me, you know, that made sense. Like putting it in that category and then going, if you can, drill down from that a bit. Yeah. And that's actually, I mean, that's nice. I mean, I'm just doing it right now. Think fruit only. And, and then you start smelling it. And it's like, you know, because when I first go into it, usually I'm like, what am I getting? Right. I'm like, so your your mind yeah. is completely overwhelmed with all the different senses you could possibly so have. So that, that's actually the uh, the method I was kind of taught was there there are distinct things in whiskeys that you can pull out. Same thing with cigars. But the first my first question on every whiskey is, what's the sweetness? Is there sweetness? What does it remind me of? And if it's fruit, it's like, okay, then what fruit, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you remember the five yeah. categories? I don't think we get... I think we know get four sweet of them. Sweet aromatics, like your sweet desserts. Sweet desserts, yeah. Fruit, spices, Spice. floral, and savory. I think the fifth one was herbs, kind of like dill, maybe, okay. maybe. mint, things kind of yeah. like that, you know. Okay. Um, That's cool. So, yeah, it was interesting. Um, so, I know we had, there were some, I, I struggled. I realized that I struggle most with the floral category. Yeah. More likely not because I don't, there's certain flowers and certain smells I just don't associate with a flower. I guess. Right. So that was challenging when we we had, uh, one of them was what, like yin yin yeah, flower? Yeah, we have to some, Google that. Some, uh, yin or yin. jasmine. I, I didn't pick up jasmine. I didn't know what jasmine was just because I'm not familiar with that scent. Right, really. right. Um, but tobacco was easy. Ginger. He got um, ginger when no one else. No one in else the room. got ginger. And he was and like, said, "Ginger," and he was. She's like, "Spot on." But the girl, I think Jackie does it. She's she like, "What are you doing?" Well, <laughs> like, yeah. Jackie says, "Don't, don't blurt out what you think it is, but." What does it remind you of? Does it remind you of a It reminds me of memory. oranges, someone goes. And like, well, that's what it is. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> the lady behind us, when she pulled out Ginger, she said, what does this remind you of? She says, my Thai waiter. <laughs> okay. At the yeah, Thai restaurant. Actually impressive. I said, All right. It may have been a little uh, non-PC, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, that's definitely a thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How well do you know um, your Thai waiter? <laughs> Apparently pretty well. <laughs> so, I had the 
great idea that, hey, Jackie's single, Chris is single, <laughs> why don't I just introduce them and, and See be Mr. Matchmaker, right? Yeah. So I went to go talk to Jackie, and I made the huge mistake of bringing up business with her. She didn't want to talk business, let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I epic fail there on my part. So, hey, Jackie, if you're listening, I'm sorry. This yeah. is Chris, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a dude. If you're Hell ever in Indiana, <laughs> I heard dude. Turkey Run's a great place to hike. <laughs> yes. So I'm checking out up front, and he just bolts out the front door. I'm going to get in the car. I'm like, <laughs> tail between his legs. He's like, out the door. <laughs> so I'm like, she, okay. just, she just shuts you down quick. Yeah, and, and S on me, man. I shouldn't have even brought that stuff up, you know? So, yeah. 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 Do, do the business on the way out. Hey, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So oh, well. it's all good. There's still time. You live, you learn. No, but she's great. She's such a knowledge bank. She does um, know a lot. Some she's she evidence knows. immediately that she knows her craft. And she's fun. Yeah. She's, she makes the whole event fun. She cuts up, and it's it's great. Well, you, you talked a minute ago, and I'm, I'm trying to remember because I saw an article this last week about Neely. Did they sell? What what happened with that? Because I saw something about them transitioning or something here recently, and what? I didn't know anything about them I don't, until you I don't, told me about them. I haven't heard that. Okay. I don't know anything about it. All the right. Neelys are historic moonshiners, yeah. and Royce is um, doing a lot of bourbon now. Um, his wife, Becca Sue, is part of the ABV podcast. She's yeah. on there a lot with Steve. Um they're all fun, knowledgeable. Um, I haven't been to the distillery. I'd like, I'd love I to go. Been there either, um, yeah. It's not that far away. It's, uh, I have tried a little been. bit of their stuff. Their ryes are really unique. Yeah, they have a definitely unique yeah. profile of their their whiskey. Mm. Uh, it uh, it, it's really interesting with them, and that, that Jackie would go with them. Um, for the Hidden Barn project and like spend all that time time over there, um, she must see something that greater culture is not seeing in the Neely family. Like, yeah, uh, especially coming from a heritage distillery like an Old Forester. Like, I think Jackie is um, such a creative person, and it wants to express that creativity she wants she doesn't want she wants to make something different every time yeah. she wants a different she doesn't want the previous batch to be like the next batch and i think that when you've got somebody that creative and you give them the opportunity to have as much creative freedom as she wants yeah then it's kind of a no-brainer i think that's what she's got with that totally. we were talking yeah. about that when we drove home is why yeah. she would have left the Round form more yeah. creative freedom, more influence, more. I mean, you think about something like a birthday bourbon, which she obviously would have had a hand in. Absolutely. What's the point of birthday bourbon? Well, we're making birthday bourbon. That's it. What What's the point of? I think her creative freedom was confined to like yeah. the 117 series, and that was it. They're just little 375 bottles, and it's it's kind of what you get. You know, when you make a birthday bourbon, it's, well, let's see how close we can get to last year. That's what people mm. want when they want a birthday bourbon. Yeah, she's Just done... replicate, huh? The, the ABV Bottle Shop's done two single-barrel picks with Hidden Bar now. We got, I've got both of them. I Did haven't you? tried the second pick that we just got, but I, the first one was uh, heavy apricot. Like, yeah. And I'm like, that's just a flavor profile. I don't think I've... Tr- Discovered in a yeah. bourbon ever. You know? Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah, we, um, I've, I've got this kid at home that um, something else I'd like to do in here, and it's going to have to be a small group of people. You know, really sign up for maybe like six, seven people to do it. But it's a, it's a tobacco tasting sensory kit. And it has uh, you know, all the different um, spices and all the things you find in a cigar. Plus, it also has like five different tobaccos so you can smell the difference between habano or corojo and some different things like that and i want to do that in here but, it's, it, but the problem is it's such a small kit it's got to be in small groups so i think it's gonna be something i'm gonna do and i might just pick a, a group of people to do it maybe we do it on on here one day 
where we can actually sit down with a group that we know their palace to figure this stuff out. And then we'll figure out if this is something we can do long, you know, at a bigger scale. Maybe we do like that where you have little packets. Yeah. Um, like you said, saffron. Saffron's expensive for real oh, good saffron. It's really expensive. The only place I ever had it was in Israel. Um, and we bought some, brought some back and didn't realize how special it was. Oh, yeah, Costco so has like, the, like, buy the, like, a few grams of it for like 50 bucks. And yeah. they put it in this big package so oh, yeah. you can't stiff it in your pocket. I will yeah. say, yeah. Which is really saffron place. goes a long way. <laughs> it does, it does. But you're right, it's very complex. It and is. I think it's what I liked about it when we got some to use. But, I mean, they were selling jars yeah. over there for like 25 bucks and we ended up buying a jar of it not realizing what we missed because we didn't know anything about yeah. saffron. Yeah. And they use it in everything over there. So She yeah. also had um, one of... Another part of the training class was she gave us a packet and there were five strips of paper in it. Oh, yeah. Four. And they were labeled four. And they were labeled one, two, three, four. And it was group A and group B. So you either had, you either got an A package or you got a B package. They were all the same. She was just trying to throw everybody. But you tasted the strip of paper and I'm like, hey, are we going to experience like psychedelic um, <laughs> hallucinations. Like, like you're putting something on your tongue to dissolve it. And you're like, like oh, wait, oh, Matt, what happened? Acid with Jackie's eye candy. This yeah. is the coolest sensory training <laughs> ever. Man, this toad tastes oh, amazing. Yeah. But you either, <laughs> there were some that had bitter notes, uh, strong bitter, mild bitter. They there was one that had nothing on it. Which half so the, the people were like, oh, I get this. The people and who raised like, their hand nothing like, on oh, that. there's nothing there. Yep. And then a sweet one, a sweet note on one. So if you got those, could pick those tastes out, then she was saying, I guess on taster Here panels, on, on taster panels, that's how they kind of judge out what you can and can't taste, whether they want you to taste their whiskey or not. Oh, okay. To try to and what was your result? Profile. I mean, I got them all right. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. He's pretty good. He's a really super good. taster. I mean, she said, the good. other thing is on tasting panels, no humility here. you're not analyzing for tasting notes. You're analyzing for quality. And it it can be, your palate can be as sensory trained as you want to. But San Francisco World Spirits Competition doesn't care if you pull this note and that note and this, this other thing out of there. They want to know, well, how complex is it? Yeah, like, how good is what's it? What's the body? Yeah, what's... How oily is it? Like, yeah. it, is it proofed in a right place? Is it hot? Like, those are the things because you're just judging the overall thing and not the minute details. And you're also tasting a million other things. So. Yeah. What they... I think the, per, the point of that was they don't want people... They don't want to, you know, the, the big companies don't want to send off-profile whiskey out, right? So sure. They, and I know they can blend it out most of the times, but, you know, if you're on a Buffalo Trace test, testing or tasting panel for George T. Stagg and you can't taste bitter, they don't want you passing something through that half the other people are going to taste bitter, a bitter note. In, right. right. So. I don't know if I told you all this story. So early on in my career, I worked for Cargill, so we were a a wet corn milling plant and we produce high high fructose corn syrup for the well, for beer companies and for a lot of the mainly soda manufacturers and I think it was Pepsi came back and said you know people are complaining it's like this grapey taste in their Mountain Dew or something and so you know people that are a lot smarter than me isolated that you know this compound and they kind of forced us to do it because there's nothing worse than tasting like really dilute high fructose corn syrup Ugh. at the end of your shift. But we we yeah, we had to do these sensory panels to try to pull out this like grapey note because Pepsi is you know huge you know influence with you know that we're buying you know so much stuff. And we had to do these sensory panels all the time. As oh, it was the worst part of my day. Did at you the find end. it? I could pick it out a little bit, but then again, I was it there wasn't a really good control. So you know how you know it's sitting in the room. The whole point of you know this doesn't have it. They, they tried that you know this one doesn't have it in it, but the folks in the room and the crosstalk and stuff like that. It, it, hmm. I, I don't know how well we did it, but it was interesting how you know other industries do that that same thing. And it, yeah, you know, it again it was so it wasn't you're fun. Basically, a 
corn syrup expert. No. Nice. We nice. can. Uh, I can tell bring you when you, I uh, a bottle of Cairo mm-hmm. syrup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. You'll, you'll be able to tell us all the chemicals. Most of the time, time when I walk into a distillery, I pick like I I get that like it reminds me of my days working at a corn milling plant because you get the. You know, you just get the fermentation, you get the, you know, the the ground up you know, yeah. corn and well, stuff smell. And, and you said it exactly right. It's like, we're not really tasting the thing. It's a memory. It, it it's is, a yeah. memory of a taste we know or we've had before in our past. Yeah, nobody and, put grape in Mountain Dew. Exactly. Right. exactly. So <laughs> Pepsi well, identified they could this. Have. There yeah. might be a grape-flavored Mountain Dew. We want that somewhere else. We don't want it in our Mountain Dew. Yeah. Pepsi said it was bad, so Cargill said, all right, we'll try to do something. Yeah. Yeah. But it was... Yeah. Yeah. Not as fun as taste some bourbon, I will tell you that right here. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that because they do tasting panels in all sorts of food industries. Like, I was watching a video on an ice cream factory and they have a tasting panel in this ice cream plant. And it, like, they're tasting for quality, they're also RDing new flavors, and it's like. Well, first of all, I don't know how some of this stuff sneaks through you guys. That's nasty. <laughs> but, <laughs> did they ever respond to you when you send in your resume wanting to be on that panel? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, my like, God. What, what do you, you do for a living? If, what if you were lactose intolerant and just <laughs> puffed up? Oh, my gosh. That would be a nightmare. Talk <laughs> about that bourbon drink that she made. Oh, yeah, yeah, she made. It was cool. It's the it was a most cocktail. unique thing I've ever tasted. Not a ton of bourbon in it. but It's a cocktail with a lot of those flavor profiles. It was not a lot of bourbon in it, but it was a clarified milk punch bourbon. Yeah. And basically, I don't know how she processed it, but she went through a process to basically curdle the milk, strain it, curdle the milk, strain it, curdle the milk, get all the proteins yeah. out. And you're left with a straw colored kind of clear clear urine cocktail. colored. Yeah. Yeah. Cloudy urine <laughs> colored. Yeah. So if you have that kind yeah, maybe want to see um, the doctor, but <laughs> <laughs> very very floral. Yeah. Coconut. It was supposed to have all the flavors in, uh, the, the yeah. notes in it as well, right? Correct. And and that's like a really high end cocktail, almost gastronomy trick. That uh, that that's becoming a lot more popular now is like clarified milk punch cocktails, but people are also fat washing stuff. Yeah, seemed like a good after workout drink to me. <laughs> to be honest with it, that's what I'm like. It's like a protein uh, shake. I guess with uh, none of the uh, with none of the pro- very little with the protein. No protein. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I man. think I actually have a sample of that cocktail out in the car. Do you really? I oh, think I do. do we have to try it. Becky didn't want to like, try. I mean, Science. Science. We just got to do it yeah. for science. Oh, yeah, it's really unique. I'd never tasted anything mm-hmm. like that. We could do that here at the end if you want to. Yeah. And then and the candle, apparently she made it, too. So maybe that's her next business model, candle making. And that's... that's candle now, she, did she ever candy. light the candle, or was it only for scent, the scent? What's that? Did she ever light the candle, no, or was it just never scent? lit it. Okay. Most people were smelling the roof of it, the lid of the thing, she, for some reason, too. I didn't get did that. She did make it, though, with massage oils in the spirit of... Valentine's oh yeah, it was Oh nice. Day. And you know, her future <laughs> man over here. <laughs> Will ruined it though. Will He's talking about it. Can't take him anywhere. One day, just save the candle. Save, save the, the candle. Save the candle. She also has um, a new project. I don't know how new it is, but she has her own perfume cologne line out called Ode du Oak. Huh. Which she is inspired by all the bourbon. I'm sure that's Favorite selling profiles. like hotcakes. You're like, oh yeah, Jack. I've got, I've got one. I'd like it. Becky loves it. Did you make sure uh, it's Chris Blue wore Jay. it that day? Maybe that was the problem. <laughs> you make well, sure Chris was wearing it. But then I, when I smelled myself, I wouldn't reset my palate. That'd no, have been a I, problem. I bought a bottle or a small little spray bottle. Had a great, bottle. been a great pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a small, I never had the opportunity. I bought a small bottle before Christmas, and my son came home. Uh, for I, you know, from IU, and went back, and it's gone now. I can't find it. Oh, so okay. I bought another one. She had some samples uh, at the store, and I bought another one. Seems to be working for him. It's called, it's called Blue Jay, I think. <laughs> he's a freshman at IU. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. he didn't need cologne. living the life. <laughs> he doesn't need cologne. So, uh, what was your pickup line going to be? Did you no, have one, No. <laughs> no. 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 Will looked at you like we talked about this, man. 
We, we didn't. We didn't really talk about it. <laughs> Chris, I coached you for four hours on the drive. Full over. drive over. <laughs> It was Stumpy. Oh. Stumpy. I lost my focus oh. at Stumpy's. So I'm looking at this Oak to Oak. Yeah, I've got the blue It's not day. crazy priced either. No, I it's mean, reasonably priced, yeah. I may have to get some of this, try it out. Rob, you work in a cigar oh. lounge. Get the feral gym. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> man. He's got beard ball cigar on the shelf. Cigar and whiskey lounge. So, yeah. you know. Love and whiskey is one of them. <laughs> Love and whiskey. Oh, here's here's one for you. For, maybe this is for uh, Will. Walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Walk of shame. I'm gonna get that in the mail probably this week. <laughs> Feral scent, dice, hiker trash. Oh, it's mint <laughs> julep. Any saffron? <laughs> saffron. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, she Hints knows trash. She's she's a master of putting those scent profiles together. So I, I'm sure they're all great. Walk of shame. What is that? What does walk of shame smell like? Regret. <laughs> Morning breath. Morning breath. <laughs> Smells like you know. Dirty underwear. Stale beer. <laughs> Saturday morning after a frat party. <laughs> yeah, really. What happened? Will Jr.'s. <laughs> Sorry. That's what I was saying. Will, Will the fourth. <laughs> the long line of Will's making mistakes out there. Long line of reasons. <laughs> Becky, when I got back, I told Becky, Becky said, what did you do? What did you do? I, I said, I screwed yeah. it up. <laughs> That's right. So Becky was on board. But it was an interesting uh, trip there and back, actually, because we're on our way to St. Louis. Uh, his wife and her twin sister are uh, on their birthday trip in... Can I bring this up? She's yeah. not going to listen. San Juan. Yeah. San Juan. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. oh they, uh, of course, the two of them get together. They're quite uh, entertaining to listen quite to. And pair. We had multiple conversations with her that I'm sure she didn't remember <laughs> at all. Uh, but we, we had the one about the... The massages and the the lack of panties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it happens. So yeah, it was an interesting yeah, weekend. Yeah, when you was, when you hear the story for the second time when she comes back and she doesn't remember she told you the first time, then yeah. 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 saying they it had with a the good same, trip. Yeah. <laughs> They did. Funny, it, was kind of, it was funny. They had a blast. And it's okay to tell stories, right? I mean, mm -hmm. she oh, did. Yeah. Well, because I still get a kick that one night you're sitting here and you're telling me about you had the whole family over and you were like, you know, getting out for a little bit of a break to have a cigar and a drink. And, and you said that, you know, the entire family was inside and Becky's naked in the pool. Just enjoying her night, man. She's like, he's like, oh, I guess time to go home. Who edits these? You or Mike? Mike, we might need an edit there. Yeah, Will we wants know. to stay married. Yeah, we might have that one out. Becky seems, oh, no. Oh, no, I she's fun. No, See, she Becky would not. seems like fun. I mean, come on. I mean, who hasn't done that, right? I'm gonna do it tonight. I mean, <laughs> in Will's pool. In Will's pool. I'm just gonna come over and. Yeah, yeah, sadly, you have his address. Mm. I do. Beached whale in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, don't look. Don't look. Yeah, that's. That'll be right around the corner, opening the pool up in another. I don't know, two months. Man. Yeah. Well, we're in that weird time of year in Indiana where. We got 65 degrees one day and 27 yeah. the next, so spring's on its way. It'll be here soon. Yeah, I wish it would just pick which route it's going to go. I am plenty into the second, third Me ride. Me too. I'm, what I'm what well are you guys uh, So I was going to ask, and I'm probably the least coffee drinker in sitting here, but did you think about pairing this with like a coffee? Like I think it'd go I, really yeah. well. I think it would too. I think it would go with either straight up black coffee or a, if you what put a creamer and sugar in it. Yeah. I think it would go nice either way. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of earthiness. Some of that almost the tobacco or not tobacco, but coffee bean kind of bitterness in yeah. it right now. Not in a bad way, just the just yeah, the coffee roasted stuff. Yeah, yeah. Coffee, man. Get a roasted coffee, cocoa kind of Yeah. But not it's not pungent, it's not strong. No. It's, and it's not bitter. It's very yeah. pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly it's 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 really savory. The smoke is real thick still. Yeah. I mean obviously you can see it. Um, it just gets better. I think so. Mm -hmm. Now, I may have on, to put this the in the Roja, the Rojas, Rojas ro rotation. rotation. Nice. Yeah. But I know the I'm um, still getting a little bit of tingle in the nose from the black it, pepper, but not aggressive at all. It, it's thinking up on me, like it's Is building it? in, in my nose. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm halfway through the second third now. But yeah, I mean another one of those cigars that we've had in here for a while, and I don't know why I don't go back to very often, but. 
So on uh, on the sip, there's almost it's still that like salted caramel thing, but there's almost an apple note in there. Uh oh, you're it, thinking proper, aren't you? <laughs> proper? No. No, there's there's like a almost an apple candy note in there. Yeah, candy apple for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's still shocking to me. I mean, I literally, we could probably take this and just drink it down. It does not taste like 125 proof. No. At all. No, no. Uh, My first sip, mm. well, definitely. First sip. Oh, yeah. But now, it's like, that's super sweet, super viscous. Yeah. It's not even giving me a hug all the way down. No. But the finish on this thing is long. It is. I mean, I'm still getting kind of more of the, the subtle sweetness in it after drinking it a few seconds ago. I, I, I love the finish on this one. Yeah, they, they nailed it. They yeah. did a great job they did. on this They really batch. did. Yeah. They really did. And I'm real interested. They just Heaven Hill just came out uh, with a press release that they're going to release their Bernheim weed whiskey yeah. at Cast Drink in two releases this year. There will be two releases um Maybe a May release and then a fall, a fall release. Hmm. But you could only get it at the You Do Bourbon um, Fill Your Own Bottle experience. Mm, yeah. Becky and I both got a bottle when we were there, and it's great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So are they doing a, a batched release? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That'd be Do you know when that's coming out? It should be coming out any time. That's why I was wondering if you could go ahead and check. Maybe that's what I'm trying to order. I'm making myself a note yeah. to do that again. So the two other things I learned at the sensory training, and correct me if I'm wrong here, was the, if you pick, was it almond? No, cherry note oh, out, yeah. cherry note out of, when you're, when you're tasting or nosing, that it would also have a, what, an almond. Should also, because the, I guess the basis for the, the note is similar or identical whatever the chemical compound is whatever that phenol is yeah you can, you, if you get cherry you can also get on and then the other one was huh. coconut and celery. celery which is odd that was a really weird one to me so that's kind of cool yes yeah, so i she found said, coconut notes more in scotch than i have in uh bourbon so it'd be good to go back to like like that caribbean cask um so we see if you can get celery see out if you of get it. some celery instead of, you know, along with it. Because that's definitely got a coconut note to yeah. it. Or if you really want to impress guys when you're doing a tasting, if someone calls out coconut and say, yeah, but how about the celery that I smell? <laughs> and everybody's going to be like, whoa, whoa, you're right. Whoa. <laughs> Man, this tastes like ants on a log. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. How you doing, man? All right. Doing oh, good. Doing gosh. good. Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We're trying. We're finishing up here. So I think so. those were the five things I learned. Yeah, that those two were actually really interesting to me because I, I definitely see the almond with cherry. I've had that before, but I've never had the coconut and celery before. No, I don't. Why wouldn't you logically pair those two together? Come on, Rob. <laughs> I'm not a big celery fan anyway. So no, I would cook with celery more than anything. I'm not one to munch on raw celery. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Celery's good in gumbo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. necessary. It's all those, all those spices yeah. absorbed. Yeah. I use that Cajun Holy Trinity in like almost every soup. <laughs> That's the base, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you even do it in a chicken noodle and it's better. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. So um, Isaiah usually has a couple of questions, which oh, you've yeah. probably answered before. Yeah, you've already answered. So them. we'll see if no, Chris don't wants put to me on the spot. Questions. Okay, Chris. Well, it's going to be an easy one for you. <laughs> Three cigars. Oh. Budget, everyday, special occasion. Uh, here. Uh, anywhere, tabernacle. Anywhere. Uh, would be more of a special occasion one for me. One of favorites. Budget. You know what? That's what Mike said last week. Was like my special occasion cigar is the Tabernacle. Yeah. I mean, if we had unlimited uh, inventory, which I know we don't, that fifty-five, that uh, um, <laughs> knuckle sandwich, sandwich yeah. fifty-five, which I hope one what of these days. The, I thought yours was the River Basin. The what? The CAO, the the River Basin. Amazon. Oh, the Amazon River. Basin. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, I was focusing on what's in the humidor here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, Amazon Basin. Know. Just yeah, you can't find it. Uh, 
Oh, Liga Pravada would be a yeah. Which Liga do you like? Uh, number nine. That's that's yeah. one I like the most too. At best. least the old ones. So I when we would go to me. another cigar place in town, yeah, I, I usually would grab that because you know me, I'll just go to the one I already know that I like. Yeah. Um, what were the other ones? They're every day. Every every day. Statements. Well, yeah, I was going to say, is there any? <laughs> Rojas statements, yeah. Does Rojas anybody, statements. Does, does he buy more Rojas statements well, than anybody? Your, uh, everybody can buy them. <laughs> yes. yes. What's your budget cigar? Like, you're cutting the grass, you just want to smoke something. Man, I'd still do it with a Rojas. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, yeah. uh, I mean, it's not a badly priced dip. No. no, no like, I don't think range. any of the, the what's it, Crow, Blackbird, th- those are same price point, and I really like those as well, though. Which one? The, the Crow. Blackbird? Oh, the Crow? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the Crows are yeah, pretty close to the same price. Not much different. Maybe a buck different. Yeah, so I mean, I'll, like, if I'm coming in here, if I know I'm going to be here for a while, maybe want to spend a little bit more, be the Tabernacle for sure. Um, but then, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, and you smoke the Crooked It's more the about the how too. long do I have to sit here. Right. That dictates what I'm going to buy. Which we do have the Robusto and the Toro in your yeah. statement for that you reason know for you. <laughs> the, I've had, I think, the last couple of times with the Toro, like a challenge through that first, like that first third, keeping it drawing how I want lately. Really? Um, mm. Where the Robusto doesn't hasn't hadn't done that to me, but like for for my money, that's yeah, that's yeah. the smoke. Yeah, <laughs> that's there you the go. Stick right there. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. Every bit about it. Let's let's change up the next question. There's How are more? we changing it? So, <laughs> you're hanging out at Will's house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> and there's three pours on his bar. Okay. <laughs> one pour you don't feel bad about grabbing at all. One that you're like, oh, I should probably ask him, but I'm gonna grab it anyway. And then the one that you're like, sneaking. Don't freaking tell Will. <laughs> 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 I just grabbed a pour of X Y Z. It's and he'll tell you like I ask him every time I, like it doesn't matter what it is like yeah. you know because that's it you know and but I've gotten to the point where if it's a, like a stag junior or something like that one four of those I'll I'll probably really head yeah but most of the stuff that's that higher price price point I I you know I steer away from a lot it of it. It was the funny. Time. He he didn't he didn't realize Russell's thirteen was that much yeah, of an alligator. <laughs> he crushed that one. And I was like, hey, <laughs> hey buddy, it's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. really That's good. That's like, great. like a Weller foolproof. All you know, I'd probably grab that off. The, yeah. yeah, and I know those aren't higher price points, depending on how you get it. But yeah, you know, um, but no, I wouldn't like any of the any of the pappies or. Um, like your old crow stuff, any of that, I would not. You know, would. That old he would crow. have to pour that for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, let me ask you this, knowing this guy, because I know in here, and there's no no problem with this at all, but you're a creature of habit. Yeah. You do tend to drink, you know, you're getting backbone barrel pick, or you're getting the starlight barrel pick most of the time. Is that, is it, does there a, Couple of bottles that he like. That's kind of his jam when he goes to your house. Stag Junior. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you could. I love yeah. Stag Junior. He would never. He, he would go for that Wood Hat. Wood Hat. Yeah. The Stag Junior though, I think is probably your. You know, which. Which is what he got me for Christmas too. Doesn't matter which batch. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which batch. I think you're gonna go. I like, grab I do one like of those. those. Yeah. You like those? Yeah. Uh, the uh, Coy Hill. Coy Hill. Dude, Coy Hill. I forgot okay. about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. a good one. Coy Hill is really good, and that has that almond note on it, or at least the one that you gave me a sample of did. Yeah, I was thinking cherry. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it just reminded me a lot of like almond cookies. Which See, yeah, that's one. That's one of my bottles I want to get for my bar at home is a, a Coy Hill bottle. I'm, I'm looking for one of those eventually too. Those yeah, good luck. Hard to get. Stag and uh, Stag Junior and Coy Hill are probably the only ones I even. Fry on brown bag or anything. Yeah. I, I think the only like allocated bottle that's probably already sold out that I want now is that uh, Parker's Heritage Double Barrel. Oh, that was really good. Oh my gosh, Will ruined me on that one. I keep finding ways to try. I found that one at your bar yet. I I usually follow. You may want to hide that one. I usually follow like <laughs> I, I you know respect Fred Minnick. 
he's, you know, world renowned taster and judge. And he just, he did not like that bourbon at all. And I was shocked. I'm like, I don't see, I just don't get what he's getting out of it. I think it's amazing. And it is hard to find now. It is scarce. Yeah. That's hard to find. Heaven Hill 17. Real hard Almost to impossible find at this point I now. Mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, I bought the last one from you. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was I knew Isaiah was gonna be stoked that their heritage release this year it's is a basically a twenty corn. year old mellow corn. It's mellow corn, man. <laughs> Cheers to mellow corn. Cheers to corn. mellow corn. Cheers to mellow corn, man. Year mellow corn. If we don't get that, I don't know. We gotta get my, that. My favorite man. thing about that oh, we got a final one for you is that that's how people are pitching it. It's a twenty year old barrel proof mellow corn, and it's like that's gonna tank its secondary value. Oh, yeah. Which hey, if it's good, it's good. So back back to something Isaiah and I have talked about. He really <laughs> wants us to do a shop pick of a barrel, uh, a uh, mellow, mellow corn, corn barrel. I'm okay, like, that would never sell. If we could sell <laughs> bottles, that it, would oh, be amazing. It would, yeah. yeah. What, what are you talking? Like a twenty dollar bottle? You're telling me the bourbon nerd it, and everybody, like you put it out to the club, wouldn't be like, yeah, I'll buy a twenty dollar barrel pick. Yeah. Like, what are you talking? Throw about? a tater sticker on there. Everyone's absolutely, happy. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you could definitely move it that way. I, I would. I wouldn't even need to taste it. I'd be like, 20 bucks? Sure, take my money. It's like, yeah. what am I buying? That or JTS Brown? Yeah. Like, at least somebody thought this was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun, though. Yeah. That being said, on the new uh, Heaven Hill picks, I got a Rittenhouse rye pick that is really, really good. Uh, one of my buddies gave it to me for Christmas. And, like, I love Rittenhouse. That's a well bottle for me. And uh, the Rittenhouse rye pick is... It's definitely written out. I, I mean, it, there's only so far you can go with it. Sure. But it is a really, it's a really, really good written house. Is it higher proof than? No, still hundred. Still, still hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I've still got a couple that I haven't. I've got some Stag Junior store picks that I haven't cracked yet that I'm interested to try. That yeah. I'm sure. I'll hold up. Uh, Sounds like a Friday night to me. <laughs> or Saturday. Oh wait, Lisa won't let me get away. Lisa, sounds Lisa like a Sunday evening to me. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're uh, you're chained to this place. Bro. I want to do. Pretty I do want to do a, uh, an event at the house for the Bourbon Club sometime this summer when we can yeah. get the pool open. Do a. You imagine just a bunch of fat guys swimming in your pool, smoking cigars, and drinking great. bourbon. <laughs> I got a that lot of open bottles time. I need to get rid of. Yeah. That's that's when I'm gonna do my clearing house. That's how you need to sell it to Becky. I'm oh yeah, clear the oh, bar yeah, yeah, out. Right, Becky. Clear the bar. Oh okay. Yeah. Becky, I will pay for another trip for you to go on. You go wherever you want to. Let me have a party. I'll she's, clear the bar out. She's down. Oh yeah. She'd, she'd, she'd probably she'd join be, in on the fun. She would. Pour yeah. a little bit without of coke a, with her without a doubt. She get her sisters in there. They be they be the party it's right funny there. Funny now, kind of slow her down on her tasting process. She just. She's got her <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> rapid fire machine gun tasting. She's got her own bourbon shelf now yeah. that I'm not allowed to touch. That's You're not cool. allowed to touch it. I'm not allowed to touch it. I've so been told it. so. Yeah, what's, what's on, on it? it? Starlight Honey Barrel. Okay. Rye or bourbon? Bourbon. Okay. Castle and Key. Every castle and key to imagine, I think. Um, and she's weaning off the. Um, uh, what is that? The, uh, the Bernheim? No. The Cash Strength? What was the... Uh, everybody was... It was one of the first, like, one of the toasted... Basil Hayden's Basil Hayden's toast, She's kind of yeah. weaning off the Basil Hayden's. Basil Hayden's toasted, Good Basil Hayden's, uh, the red wine she's cast. She's got a couple finish, different you know, uh, finishes there, and she's kind of... Like, you can tell she's kind of disinterested now. And she likes Starlight Cigar Batch, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, somebody's got to like it. I like that. <laughs> I, I, do, love I like it. it. Do you really? I just right gotta one, be yeah. in the mood for it. That, that's my deal. Yeah. With it. I, I guess yeah. I just haven't found the mood where I there like it. There was somebody it. looking for it <laughs> on the Bourbon Club page, and I was like, "Hey, if you want to try it, like, hit me up." Yeah. Don't go chasing a bottle if you don't know, because I have friends that hate it, like, just absolutely hate it. And in fact, I uh, 
I said I had five open. I forgot I gave one of them away. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I was just like, I don't need five of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I commented yeah. on that post yeah. and I said, dude, you need to go try a sample before you spend the yeah. money on a bottle because yeah. it's, you'll either love it or you're and not going to like it. And I would say it's probably something that the bourbon guy that doesn't smoke cigars is probably going to like. Just say, I didn't know part or of they're at least going to appreciate it. Yeah. I don't want to smoke a cigar with it. No. I, you so should get we branded talked about that, that a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it got branded that way because they opened up the Amberana cast and said, it smells like, like tobacco. tobacco. Yeah. Um, Which I, I, I could see that for sure. It just doesn't pair. It does not. And they're like, oh, but have you tried it with the Oliva Serie V Milano? Yeah, it just overpowers that too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it makes the Oliva, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that? It makes it palatable, the cigar. <laughs> well, Actually, you, that's a good stick. It's okay. You, Isaiah, you gave me three three different picks of, of Cigar Bash that I tried, and yeah. they were all different. Yeah. Some I liked better than others. Some were just so funky, they were crazy. Oh, but, yeah. Man. I was going to well, refill those bottles funky. with samples to you give You can't them. do it. You I can't, can't do it. I've washed them and washed them, and I can't get that. It would have tainted the pour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't I'm get telling you. Like, like it's a, it is as pungent and potent as a cast-strength Isla Scotch. Like, yeah. once you yeah. have that in a sample bottle, you can't Throw reuse that away. sample chuck bottle. It. Chuck yeah, it. chuck it. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that when we were down doing our barrel pick at Starlight, we did the, the rye finished and port. We got to try the two side by side that were they were aging. One of them was delicious. Oh yeah, and I still haven't seen that one. I don't know what's going on with that. That one. happened in the they turned both of those into the bottled and bonds. That's that's a shame because that was a really it was really, really good, good. The only one I've ever liked. Yeah. Like, period. Uh, well, Meg. because it was it led with bourbon and finished with Amberana. Right. Mm. So it like it wasn't so over pungent. Yeah, I mean it. It wasn't a mood poor cigar batch. It was balanced in a way that none of them had. It was been. probably the only one I think I've ever tried that I think I would have smoked a cigar with it and still enjoyed it. Yeah. And if you're calling a cigar batch, it better well go with a cigar. That Magnus cigar batch. Was that Magnus? No, that's meant for cigars. Yeah. Cigar yeah. blend. Yeah. Cigar blend, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's good. I, I love how fantastic. they. I had a little pour of that the other night at home. I still got a little bit I left. Love, yeah, I love how they give the tasting notes on each one of those batches, and they're I different. Just, they're all different, and they do such a good job with marketing that I, I think yeah. it's brilliant how they. Well, Rob and I went through like four of them together, four or five different batches together, and uh, what we both decided is we liked our own batches best. <laughs> mine, yeah. mine led a little bit more spicy, which honestly fits my palate well. Like I love something that leaves a little bit of spice. Well, uh, I think didn't we feel like it was more yours was more Armagnac forward, mine was more cognac. Forward. Yeah, and then like the batch one sixteen, that one was, was too on there, sweet. It was just very sherry. Yeah, yeah, it was very very sweet. It, uh, it wasn't bad. No, on its own it was fine, but the other two were better. Yeah. So, but that's cool too. It's like. Now you can go out and find the the releases you want if you can find them. If you can find right. them. They're hard to find. And it's expensive on the shelf. Yeah, two twenty nine like, at Total Wine, which is usually as cheap as you're going to find anywhere like, around here. Even at secondary value, that person's only making 50 bucks after tax, which yeah. kind of defeats the purpose in general. Yeah, as far as drink I'm it. Concerned. Crack drink it and drink it. They're very good. Yeah. But uh, at that price point, you got to really want it. Yeah. Cool. It's getting a little toasty. I'm man. loving it. It is cigar. getting toasty. I'm, I'm, getting I'm in little... the final third. Finalthirdcigar.com. <laughs> <laughs> 180 East Broadway, Ingalls, Indiana. Ingalls, Indiana. Yeah, 46048. 46048. 46048. Yes. I never remember the zip code. <laughs> Still don't. 48? 46048. Saturdays. At one o'clock, come hang with Chris and I. We're usually over there in the corner. Oh, yeah. That's our jam on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got a nice little crowd growing here already today. It's a um, beautiful sunny day out, even though it's frigid as all getting yeah, it's outside. It's getting better, but it's it's going to be nice. It's going to get nice today. Yeah, ground was thawing out today, so <laughs> yeah, a little muddy. Snowmageddon yesterday. Snowmageddon. We had like what 
<laughs> Dusty. What, did somebody <laughs> predict a snowmageddon? Uh, no, I, I just every time it snows in Indiana, people freak out. Yeah. So. Just yep. a rush on the grocery store, got to yeah. buy all the eggs. Yes, eggs and toast, baby. The craziest thing about that to me is like, do you not have shelf stable like pantry items? Like, do you not just have a a thing of oats? Yeah, you're not gonna starve. And you don't yeah. realize you're in Indiana, and tomorrow you'll be able to go to the store. <laughs> it's like, come on, yeah. guys. Do your roads? They'll be clear. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Like right. maybe the immediate road you live on. Won't be great, but you might have to you might have to dig at the bottom of your driveway to yeah. get your car out. But like, yeah, Indiana is notorious for like remembering even people that are too young to remember 1978 blizzard, and that's all they think about. Like, we haven't had anything like that for what well, we we'll see since 78. Since 78, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like. It's not going to happen, guys. You're fine. Yeah, worst case is you got to dig into your ramen noodle stash. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to make it through. Come on. I mean, seriously, who doesn't have mac and cheese on, on their shelf? Who doesn't have oatmeal? You don't have oatmeal? I got oatmeal. I don't have mac and cheese, though. Okay. But there are surely shelf stable pantry items that everybody has. You can find some. And if something. you have waited that long to like buy groceries for the week, it's on you. That is on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You probably could handle not having a meal that day. It's fine. <laughs> right. You, you'll survive. It'll be okay. None of, none of us you'll are starving. You'll survive. Yeah. It'll be okay. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, man. I'm in the final third. The wonderful thing about the retro hail on this cigar is it's that. building for me. Like, after it blows yeah. out. Yeah. It's getting back to some of that spice. It is. It's, it's almost red pepper. It still has a lot red. of savoriness to it, though, too. I mean, this this would be a good one. Like you were talking about going over and smoking some meat. This would be a good one to be sitting outside while you're smoking some meat and getting the similar notes to it. Yeah. I, I get red pepper now, to me. It's like a little blast. Yeah. A little pop. Of, a lot of spice On the retro now. hand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, a yeah. Lot of spice it's there for sure now. Yeah. Uh-oh. Got to get the science pour out now. The science pour. Yes. All right, so I have to ask you a question. Okay. You had the Mickey Finn's Elijah Craig single barrel. No, I'm going to have to bail. I got a basketball game to go to here in a minute. Oh, do you? Yeah. Right now? You off? I got to leave here. And like I'm like down. I've been watching the clock. I got, you know, three yeah, or four minutes. Oh, there you go. Go ahead and go, man. What do you? I was going to ask you. I don't want to go. How do you? How do you stack up the A123 to the Mickey Finn's uh, Florence, South Carolina? Shout, hey, shout out to Mickey uh, Finn's. Hey, seriously, Mickey shout Fins. out to Mickey, Mickey Finn's. Fins. Cheers, Mickey, Mickey Finn's. I don't uh, think I've ever had that one, have I? I shared it with you. You did? Okay, okay. Um, this? Let me step out while you're in the middle of the Yeah, all right. See you. All right. Thanks for coming on here. Appreciate you coming on. The Mickey Fins to me tastes like a single barrel. Like it, it just tastes like a single barrel. N nothing wrong with that, but this is a lot more. They went for balance across the board on it, and uh, I'm not saying the Mickey Fins is unbalanced. It's just, it's a different animal. Mickey Fins also leans later? a little bit more red fruit heavy. Right. Yeah. So right. I, I think they're both. Uh, I think they're both okay. wonderful. But I will be here. Hi, <laughs> right, man. See you, bud. Yeah. I re yeah, I, yeah, I think that um, this batch <laughs> is the best to me that they put out in a while. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I'm, I'm, Which uh, was something people were really worried about with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs because the, uh, the, the 20s and the 21s and even the early 22s, Kind of lame. Man. They were, they were, yeah. Like not especially bad, the early twenty twos were not really bad, but they weren't what Elijah Craig Barrel Proof was. Right. Um, yeah. A A A one twenty two did not. This it, I just didn't like it. And yeah. Very Same. earthy. Yeah. And I don't even remember. I, I don't want to comment on B because I don't remember. It. C was good. And like you said, you could go back and forth between C nine twenty two and that it, one. But if I you like think that about one. That, like, yeah. 
C C nine nineteen, C nine twenty, C nine twenty one. Those were the batches people chased. Everyone thought, oh, these C batches are the ones to go for. So explain to me the difference between A, B, and C batches. So A one comes out in uh in January. January. B five comes out in the fifth month, whatever that right. is. So it's not anything to do with Rick House location. No. It's just uh -uh. May, time they're of all the year. Gotcha. They're, yeah. all yeah. they're all batch. Okay. They're all they're all batch blends. So you'll have a A one, B five, and a C nine every single year until gotcha. they stop doing this. Yeah. Okay. And uh people chase the C batches for the past couple years, but man, this is a great A batch. It really and, is. Uh, Last year, there were a couple good batches, too. I think the B and the C batch were fantastic. Well, that C batch is... That restored my hope for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. Elijah Craig no, Harper. it did. It did. Because yeah. I well, didn't really think I liked it. A lot of the a lot of the ones in 19, 20, and 21 leaned into that oak tan, and, and I'm oak sensitive. Like, that's that's my blind spot is in oak. Like, I, I taste that, and, like, that's the only thing I'll end up tasting in it. Like, if it finishes as tannic oak, I'm out. A lot of times that presents to me as, like, pencil shavings or marker, like, permanent marker. Yeah. Just has that real tannic sort of thing. Celery. Yeah. <laughs> not, not celery. No, not celery, celery minus the ants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and if you're interested, if you, if you got time to come in here and have a couple of pours... I've got both of them on the bar right now. So you could try the C922 and the A123 and and figure it out yourself, man. I mean, yeah. they are different enough. I, they're very different from each other, yeah. but they're both really good. And you get a chance to try two really good Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, you know, I don't know if they're picks or what they call them, but um, releases, I guess. Yeah. Um, nice. So you could try them. I, I, I will say right now, if you want the C922, you better get in here soon because we're down to about a bottle and a half of it. Yeah. And I've been trying to get more, and they're apparently out of stock. So. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get more. I don't think so either. You should see about getting more of this bar A122. I got one at home. And, and the great thing about A123 <laughs> is if you can find it at retail, yeah. it's really reasonably oh, priced. Meyer had it for, what, 61 bucks. They had it. They had it on sale for $61, $60.99. Yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah. wow. You know, like, shout out to Jake Nation. Jake Nation got me a, a, a bottle for my home Jake. bar. Because I've got, because um, I, I, I tend, I don't pull from my bar here to take home with me. And he got me a bottle there. And that's my bottle at home now. So. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Uh, Meyer got a plethora of it. Mm -hmm. But at that, I'd pay up to 100 bucks for this bottle. Oh. SRP. Easy. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, for sure, because there's a lot of hundred dollar bottles out there. I would never even look at touching. Yeah, Heaven Hill, cover your ears. Cover your ears, Heaven Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah don't, don't do that. Us. No, don't do that, please. And I will say too, not that we we've, we've, we've talked about a lot, but the Larceny, the last batch of Larceny. Yeah, the C nine twenty two. They hit that one out of the park. Yeah. I they? haven't tried that one. I, mean, I was not a fan of Larceny Barrel Proof. At all. I mean, I thought it drank hot. I thought it was just... It typically just, did. And that last one was... Very, that's what Chris and I had at Stanley's last week. That okay. we paired with this cigar. Or not oh, this yeah. one, but the other, La Creme. Yeah. yeah. And it worked. It was just great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So how much different is Larceny Barrel Proof from Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? It's a weeded mash bill. Weeded. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. It's weeder. Yeah, Larceny's yeah. a weeder. Gotcha. Okay. It is totally different. Yeah. yeah. Not comparable. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. I don't think yeah. so. Cool. But, uh, yeah, man. Got a nice crew in here right now. Yeah. Building up. I'm kind of wanting to just sit back here and smoke and drink this and enjoy it for a few more minutes. I would minutes. like to. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to work yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, anything else you guys got to say about the cigar and no. the drink? I'm uh, I'm about ready to put mine down. I, I'm just getting into the final third now. You too. Me too, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Can hang out for another minute. Go back to work and you can sit here and talk. Yeah. No, I'm hanging out. I still got a port of finish. You got oh, like, that's true. That's you got true. like 500 Sazeracs left to make tonight, probably. No, uh, about to be making a lot of apple cider old fashions. <laughs> that's this crew that it's just cr came in. Yeah, this is a crew that definitely likes those. It's just, it's, it's just so sweet. Well, it tastes like simple syrup, man. <laughs> 
kind of is. I mean, throw some bitters in there and a the cinnamon stick, and all of a sudden you got full in the glass. Yeah. I, one last thing I'll say about our trip to St. Louis last weekend. We did go to Stumpy Spirits, which okay. is in, on the other side of the river in Illinois. Um, very cool little distillery. Um, is it a lot of white spirits? It's a lot of white spirits. Yeah. But they, on their tastings, they don't have a lot of bourbon. They only had one bourbon, and they had two flavored bourbons. And you got to run through the tasting and the tour. Did you like the chocolate bourbon you tried? I'm oh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they, what, we, what Chris and I ended up doing, they, we could make our own cocktail. So we took their flagship bourbon at 90 proof. Okay. And then they had a uh, pecan flavored bourbon. And rather than using the vanilla X, the vanilla um, simple syrup or the vanilla sweetener they had to make yeah. the old fashioned, we took the pecan whiskey, which was only 60 proof. That was our sweetener. <laughs> and we made basically a pecan old fashioned um, oh, yeah. with That's bitters. That's the way to go, yeah. And that was delicious. Okay. Um, they have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of experimental bourbons they have in their Rick House. They just, you can't taste the cast strength or the barrel proof stuff there. They don't release it. So that was a little bit disappointing. But uh, again, super nice people. They're grain to glass. Uh, cool. That was a cool little. It is a cool little. I thought there was little only little one place. grain to glass distillery in uh, Indiana, you know? Yeah. <laughs> First one, man. <laughs> ever. 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 No one ever can do it. No. Nope. You know the moonshiners? They were sourcing all their grains. Well, of course they Every were. Every single one of them. Of course they were. Speaking of moonshiners, would you like to talk about the next barrel pick that will be coming down the line? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Go. So we have, uh, we've got a barrel pick locked down with Spirits of French Lick. Shout and out to Alan. Yeah, shout out to Alan uh, Bishop. Alan. That dude is cool. He absolutely knows what he's doing. Yeah, I'm working on trying to get a a, a day where I can go down and meet him before, because we're not doing the pick until June. Give us the nice fall release, and um, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be a cast strength brandy. Yeah, which some of their cast strength brandies come out at almost 140 proof. Yeah, and it's insanely good. So that's what we're going to be doing. But I'm, I'm, we're going to try to get a, a time to go down and actually meet Alan beforehand, get to know him a little Absolutely. bit too, hear a little bit of the history behind the place. And I'm excited yeah, about that. So, uh, and when you whiskey people hear brandy, just know whiskey people are going to pick your brandy. Yes, hundred percent. And I'll tell you, if you're if if you're not sure about brandy and you want to try it, we've got Butcher Town brandy on the shelf. It's cast drink brandy as well. And wonderful. We say it all the time. It's the bourbon lover's brandy. I mean, it definitely has most of the bourbon notes, but you still taste the brandy. In and it. that's what Alan's making. He's not exactly. making sweet brandies. He's making true brandies and barrel aging them. So tell us what brandy is. So brandy is a distilled fruit spirit. That's it. It's yeah. just just it doesn't fruit. have to be anything specific. It can be uh -huh. any fruit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, any fruit that you can make brandy out of. Sadly, sorry, good times. You can't make a watermelon brandy. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's kind of an inside bourbon lover's joke. Yeah. Uh, Wait, man, you can't just take brandy and, like, throw watermelon Jolly Ranchers in there and let it steep out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, no, just no. say no. The just answer say no. is no. Yes. Would that impart some flavor to your brandy? Yes, but they use flavoring for all of their finishes. Yeah. But uh, no, seriously, I'm I'm really looking forward to that pick, and I think it's, I am too. I think we're gonna find something special. There. I think so too. Um, we we a lot had of one the spirits of French Lake stuff. Alan just the way Alan distills and bottles is. And I've heard him, like, on his Instagram live say, hey, if I'm throwing uh, kasha, which is toasted buckwheat, into this into this bourbon, he said, I want you to be able to taste those qualities. Sure. So Why their bourbons it? lean a little grain forward for people. And, uh, and, hey, if that's not you, that's not you, whatever. you got to give their brandies a try. Well, we had one in here um, around New Year's Eve. A guy gifted me a bottle, and it was it was 138 proof brandy finished in Isla Scotch barrels. Yeah, and you had some of that, didn't you? Yeah. Taste that? No, I, I have thought not you did. Tried it. No, oh, I have man. not tried it. Yeah. I thought you did. Well, sorry, it's gone. But <laughs> Is it gone? <laughs> it's gone. Yes. You killed it. We killed it on New Year's Eve. Gosh. But it but it was it was the most subtle. 
um, peated scotch note you would ever get out of it. Just you got a little to, bit of smokiness on the nose. You did, but it was more of almost a campfire smoke as opposed to that peat. Yeah. And it just balanced out the sweet yeah. and the heat. And it just it it tasted pulled it all like together. Uh, high proof uh, Mott's apple juice. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. A little bit good. of oaky in yeah. there, too. So that's something to look forward to. I can't wait for that. I mean, I, I say that every time we do a pick. I can't wait. All of Every one of our picks has been so different. It's been nice. I mean, like, one year's coming up here in a couple weeks. Actually, by the time this airs, it'll be one week later. We're going to have we're gonna put out some bottles of our original first barrel pick out. But, you know, that's, the, that's just a straight cast strength bourbon from Indiana Whiskey Co., We've got the Backbone and the Starlight um, that are going to be on the shelf, too. Hopefully, by that time, I might have Peach Street in here, too. Yeah, so, right, yeah. if we do have it that week, we'll have all four of our first-year barrel picks. Um, every barrel pick we've done has been different, and this is going to just continue to, to change, the, you know, change the game. It's going to continue to do something different. And that's kind of what we like to do is introduce people to different things. That's all in the whiskey world, yeah. you know? So... We're excited. We're very excited. Uh, I'm looking Bar forward to it. Yeah, sure. barrel barrel picks are kind of a magical experience because you really get are. obviously you're picking this barrel, but you're doing it with your friends. You're doing it with people that you enjoy drinking whiskey with. Absolutely. And you get a experience with the distillers that you don't get otherwise. It's just the best, I think. Of well, and it's different yeah. than doing a tour. You know, you get a tour, you get a canned speech about yeah. the distillery. When you're doing a barrel pick, these guys are telling you the ins and outs of what they do and why they love it and why they do it. And you, you really get to hear more of their passion behind it, not just a brand. And that's the beauty of the craft distilleries across the board is they don't have, per se, master distillers. Like, these guys are actually distilling because, well, there's... Normally not another person to do it. Right. Yeah. You know? And that's the case with French Lick. I mean, Alan is the man. Yeah. He's the one that started moonshining back, who knows, probably when he was around 12 years old, I'm assuming, <laughs> right? Um, but he's been just you know, moonshining, and now he's got a distillery. He's still involved with everything that happens there. And that's, that's kind of fun because, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this at all, but this is a massive corporation right. now. This is not your small town distillery. It's still fun to watch the passion behind these small guys coming out and making great stuff. Well, and honestly, craft distillers kind of have to fight for their life to survive in this industry when you have big heritage distilleries like Heaven Hill, yeah, like your Maker Smart, like Buffalo Trace. You have to make a product that's going to stand out. And yeah. The way they go about that's all different. Like, Starlight's really doubled down on the finishing stuff. Yeah. Because they can do that very well. Right. But people seek out that because, because their finishes are extremely well done. Yeah. Uh, and we said that last week, too. It's like, it used to be the, the whole finishing thing was just like an afterthought, and people thought it was... They kind of shat on it a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, like, a, now it's a like lot of the old sentiment for finished whiskeys is, <laughs> oh, this is for bourbon drinkers that just want flavored bourbon, right? And, or uh, the whiskey wasn't good on its own. Let's finish it and make it taste better. What's, what's your favorite? What's your favorite um, French Lick bourbon right now? My favorite French Lick bourbon is their Morning Glory, really? and I'm not so had that one. The yet. Morning Glory is uh, corn, wheat, oat. Buckwheat and kasha. So kasha is toasted buckwheat. I'll, I'll get you some. But it is, it's just unique. It's its more floral than anything else. And, and it, it still is grain forward, which I actually like that profile. Yeah. Like, I love the craft distillers. The other thing, that Morning Glory, it's like a $50 bottle. Yeah. Hunter Proof, like, kind of an easy buy for me. That one pairs extremely well with cigars. Like, uh, my favorite forever was uh, the Lee W. Sinclair, which is uh, which is the one that just has oats in it. It, it tastes like oatmeal, man. Like, well, I even grew the up Maddie, eating oatmeal. Even the Maddie Gladden is a good is a good pour too. Yeah, it's a little lower the proof. Maddie but Gladden is the uh, French Lick bourbon for your heritage bourbon lover. Right. That's the only one I've had. Yeah. Um, my my brother-in-law got me a bottle for Christmas. Yeah. I, I think it's great. 
I, it, and it, it was grain forward. Yeah, I, I love to taste the grain in yeah. whiskey. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's the same way with uh, the Hidden Barn stuff. Like the Hidden Barn stuff and the, the Neely Distal, it is grain forward. Yeah. But I think as soon as you, uh, as soon as you kind of get tired of the heritage distillery stuff, I think people tend to gravitate that way. Like, let's see what people are making that's different. Yeah. And uh, again, with French Lick stuff and with Starlight stuff, you're not going to get a lot of that refined oak quality because they haven't been around long enough. And uh, the wonderful thing about like Spirits of French Lick is there was never a an MGP product that came out of there. Right. Same thing with Starlight. There's never an MGP yeah. product that came out of there. They had other things running so that they could do just their own stuff ground up. And that's extremely admirable, especially yeah. in this market. Because yeah. a lot of times people get a taste for your blending, which... Most people can't blend MGP that well. Sorry to you. Like, it, there's a select three or four that do a really good job, and everyone else is just picking barrels. Otherwise, it's just plain Jane MGP, and yeah. hey, that's fine for mass market. But for yeah. your, your bourbon lovers, like, they'll taste that and say, "Oh, okay, you know, whatever." It's well, MGP, and that's you know the other thing with with some of these smaller distilleries, and obviously, if you're opening up today. You don't have four-year-old whiskey for four years. No, you I mean, know you can't just piss out four-year-old exactly. whiskey. Exactly. So I, I get the whole idea of sourcing and, and why you have to do that. The problem you have with a lot of these distilleries are the sourced whiskey is better than their own stuff. So you get used to drinking six-year-old MGP from a distillery, and then their own stuff comes out, and you're like, oh, man, that let me down. You know who did do it right, though? Who? Uh, hard Truth. Yeah. Hard Truth completely rebranded their own bottles. That, they don't look anything like the MGP source stuff. And the first thing they released was their rye. Rye, across the board, comes of age, and this is in quotation marks, way quicker than any bourbon. Well, bourbon. and didn't New Riff, New Riff did something similar, too? They were sourcing, and they so, completely rebranded. So New Riff's uh, source stuff was OKI. Yes, and some of those older MGP stock OKIs are still going for crazy values on secondary yeah. because that was during the, the MGP high age craze. But when New Riff came out with their own stuff, you're talking five, six year old product right. because they were able to use that MGP to get them to that point. I would be honest, if I was starting a craft distillery tomorrow, <clears throat> I would really look at trying to partner with a company like Interstave and see if I could do some rapid aging stuff techniques and just release a two-year-old bourbon or a one-year-old bourbon in smaller barrels and turn out my own stuff. That's, yeah. If I could hit on it. You know? Yeah. If you can hit on it. If you can't, you know, because you just, you're, you're at the mercy of what MGP is going to, or what Squibb's going to give you now. Yeah. Right. And, and, yeah. You know. Penelope's yeah. doing great. With it, they right? are. They're yeah. doing excellent with it. But yeah, you're not going to get. You know, Penelope's. A, I think more of a unicorn in it's that an market of MGP. For sure. and, yeah, it's yeah. just great. And uh, but they're doing extra finishing stuff on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like that's what you're talking about. Like the architect is all French oak finished. Yeah. And uh, that's. I think their best product in the line. I think the Penelope Rosé finish is really good. It's just unique. I think the Penelope... Like, who else is doing a Rosé finish? Yeah, and I think the, the toasted barrels you find from different states are all really unique, too. Like, the one I got from Missouri was fantastic. The one you had from Louisiana was the one that kind of got me started on them. Great. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So... Again, Penelope is another one that's working their way into Indiana. Hopefully, in the next year or so, we'll have them. Um, it's going to be one that people are going to love because, I mean, we already have a lot of people in the club that hunt them every every time they go someplace. Absolutely. Yep. And it's getting a lot of lot of uh, fanfare for sure. So totally. Cool. Well, we should probably wrap this. Yeah. Up. Well, thanks again for coming on, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. Talking about great. That. I enjoyed it. Sensory enjoyed training. It. We definitely would like to do some sensory training stuff here. We're working on it right now with cigars and whiskey. Yeah. We'll be doing more of that this year. Um, we've said this before. We definitely want to do more events that are not just your standard come in and buy four cigars, get a free cigar type thing. We want to do things that 
you know, educate, but also is fun to do. So we'll be doing more of that. 100%. Um, again, you can follow me on Instagram at Final Third Cigar. You can find me at The Whiskey Pastor. I'm AM Physics on Twitter and Swampy2424 on Instagram. Nice. Okay, uh, do you know what Chris's tag is? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't either. I don't Chris is not a social media. No. Okay. No, he well, does if you If you want to hang out with Chris, come in on Saturday mornings. Yeah. Like right or as not, we open, and I'm sure you Or you'll, noon. Or noon. Yeah. Noon to one-ish. Yeah. And, and you'll get it. So I don't I don't know what Lisa's saying. I sure think she it. just gave you permission to go to the Avs game on the 14th. Oh, <laughs> oh, <I'm here>. <laughs> <laughs> I think she told us we need to light another cigar up. I think she that's did. What I, thought I, I, heard. I do think that's what I heard. That's from what I heard. Her sign language. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, we have a nice crowd on here. On that note, <laughs> on that note yeah. uh, thanks for joining us. And yeah. uh, cheers. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Guys. cheers.